Well, he's just 22, but is the founder of his second company, a global education platform that sees him interview the world's leading business people. And he's currently raising thousands for Lifeline. Please welcome to the cafe, Jake Miller. Oh, That's I'm so happy to have you here, Jake. I interviewed, I interviewed Jake one night. He interviewed me four years ago. Really? Yeah. Well, let's get back into that in just a, in a minute. First, I want to say congratulations. Thank Pretty you. Pretty impressive, uh, 22. So you've managed to cram in quite a lot to your life. Have you always been entrepreneurial? Has it always been something that's been there? Um, when I was about 10 years old, I started my first business, which was uh, making and selling fridge magnets at local supermarkets and uh, you know shops around town. And uh, my mum was very creative and my dad very entrepreneurial. So I kind of brought those together when I was young and started my first business. So I guess it's kind of in the butt. Um, yeah. Were you driven yeah. by the money or just the fact you wanted to produce something and sell it? Um, I think at that age, it was more about just going out and creating something cool and going and selling it. But over time, you kind of start to, I guess, become more driven by what's a good business opportunity and sort of learn the lessons from the last one. So, yeah. Yeah, and also you can go and buy stuff with your money that you're earning when you're so young. Exactly. I didn't save it. I must say I always went and spent it straight away on new video <laughs> games and all that sort of thing. Oh, you need to do that. Save um, charity spent and, and spend thing, aren't you? But yeah, yeah. the ratio. Getting it right when you're 10 is quite difficult. Exactly. Now, you've had a fascinating story, Jake, because, you know, that was a great start. And then at age 15, tragedy hit your family. Yep, absolutely, yeah. So when I was 15 years old, my dad died in a, in a plane crash in Fox Glacier, and uh, that definitely sort of shook things up a lot. Um, and, you know, I was, uh, you know, 15, as Mike says, and I was attending Christchurch Boys High School at boarding school at the time. And, uh, you know, after that, things definitely changed, changed quite a lot. Yeah, gosh, absolutely. And that's when sort of John Key got involved. So how influential was that meeting with John Key? Yeah, so John Key visited the crash site just to pay his respects to the victims. And, uh, you know, I wrote him a letter just saying, look, thank you so much for, you know, doing that and he wrote back and said he wanted to have lunch so came up to our house in Greymouth where I was living at the time and had white bait sandwiches and spent a couple of hours together and oh, wow. you know he was an amazing uh, inspiration to me because I remember you know his dad had died when he was mm -hmm. seven and went on to achieve his dreams and I remember being so inspired by that and wanting to, to do the same. So, so. that is really really cool uh, and then you founded Umfa uh, yes, and I you did. interviewed Mike about this. I did yeah I interviewed Mike on the on the set at the edge back a few years ago now and uh, yeah it was with uh, Dom and JJ and we uh, I interviewed about 150 of kind of the country's top uh, people across sports, media, politics, arts, entertainment. And Mike. Um, and <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, yeah. It was well worth it, wasn't it, Jack? It was, it was. Uh, I remember, I think I, I, I cried of laughter during that interview. We, oh, had, some, we had some funny moments, so it was, it was good funny fun. funny back then, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then after that, so Umfa, so, so Umfa was basically sold to the government after that, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I went and uh, had a meeting of the government because we were looking at doing a partnership to kind of distribute all the content into the schools in New Zealand and I just said to them why don't you guys buy this and they said oh that's actually not a bad idea so we started a negotiation and two months later uh, or about five months later we, we sold the business. Wow that's incredible and you've got a new business called Unfiltered? I do yeah Unfiltered so Unfiltered's an online learning uh, business sort of inspiration education platform so similar in the sense that we interview uh, you know people and we've filmed about maybe 300 interviews with top business leaders from around the world so there's a lot of travel a lot of uh, you know a lot of interviews but it's it's good fun and basically our, our viewers subscribe similar to a Netflix model and then have access to this amazing library of business content and business advice from some of the world's top entrepreneurs. Wow. Now I'm quite fascinated Jake because I wanted to know how does a young lad from New Zealand get contact with these leaders because you've had Richard Branson, you've had so many world leaders um, as well, how do you convince them to come and be part of what you're doing? Yeah I mean a lot of, a lot of persistence you know we're sort of constantly following people up and trying to get these interviews and uh, you know I think I always say like we do knock down doors like right. we generally will, will follow some up you know someone up 15 16 times before giving up and, uh, and when I say giving up we'll always try a different way after that yeah. so never giving up and just uh, you know trying to I generally just guess people's email addresses though like you can pretty wow. much guess anyone's <laughs> wow. email in the world. Richard Branson at Branson. And then, yeah, and just go, oh it's the 16th time he's ringing me let's just do it. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. exactly. Uh, so tell us about your fundraising for New Zealand child suicide prevention charity Lifeline um, what are you hoping to raise? Yeah so I've I've been down in New Zealand, so mainly based up in New York now, and came back down to uh, work on a couple of things. You know, um, firstly, I was down here launching the new Mate 10 smartphone with Huawei, which was amazing. So we launched that, you know, with great artificial intelligence uh, capability. So that was great, and also did this dinner with uh, for Lifeline. So I became an ambassador to raise money for uh, youth suicide in New Zealand. And uh, my my plan was to go out and raise $100,000 over four dinners uh, with various people I've interviewed, inviting them to this dinner. And uh, one of my good friends who owns the the old mansion that Kim 
Capcom uh, lives in uh, hosted it, and uh, we had uh, you know some people out, and we raised fifty six thousand dollars in one night, which was amazing. Um, and the second one's coming up uh, in about three months' time, and we've got um, Heli Train sponsoring two helicopters to fly over to Waikiki, and we're trying to raise another forty thousand dollars at that lunch. So, oh wow, that yeah. sounds great. Yeah, you are such an inspiration because not only have you you know persisted, but you're giving back, and I love that about you. But just quickly, a last question: Do uh, skydiving? I heard you. You do that. You're an adrenaline junkie. Even though your father passed away doing that, you yep. love doing that stuff? Oh, I love it, yeah. No, I've been uh, learning to fly in, uh, in New York, which has been great. And uh, the plan is to, to fly around the world in a, in a two-seater plane one day soon. So we're sort of planning towards that adventure and jumping out of planes along the way. So I've done about 120-odd skydives oh, an hour wow. and definitely no slowing down. And I have absolutely no doubt that you will do that. Jackie, thanks so much for coming in. Um, amazing. Yes, I'm available for unfiltered if you need me. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, we should do one. All the go. best. All the best. Um, we wish you lots of good luck for the fundraising as well. Thank you so much. Much appreciated.